Picture this. It's a beautiful late spring day in Sandy Hill, just afternoon. You're in your house preparing lunch, and you go down to the cellar to grab some potatoes. Suddenly, the earth beneath you begins to move. Flames begin shooting out of one of the sewer connections. The cellar fills with flames and choking smoke. Miraculously, you escape with your life. This was the exact scenario for the Lillian Petta piece during the Ottawa sewer explosion of 1929. There have been at least two sewer explosions in Ottawa's history, the first occurring on May 29, 1929. They began in the Golden Triangle neighborhood at 11.50 a.m., continued on to Sandy Hill at 12.10, and reached New Edinburgh and Montreal Road around 12.15. The worst property damage occurred in Sandy Hill and New Edinburgh, where windows were blown out on many buildings, some of which were even lifted off of their foundations. One church in New Edinburgh, St. Martin's Reformed Episcopal Church, lost all its indoor contents due to the explosions. Along with property damage, it was reported that 56 manhole covers were blown into the air, some as high as 40 feet. Witnesses described the explosion as sounding like a small cannon being discharged. About nine people were injured by flying glass and many suffered severe burns. A Mrs. Hannah Hayden, age 73, was the only person who died from burns sustained during the explosions. Although the cause was never officially determined, it was suspected the explosions were the result of homeowners disposing of gasoline in the sewer and leaking service station tanks, or a leak from a gas main. The gas might have been ignited from a match, a car backfiring, or spark from a trolley wheel. Another set of explosions occurred on January 28, 1931 at around 4.50 p.m. Once again, the explosions start in the Golden Triangle, continue through Sandy Hill, but stop just east of Cummings Bridge, sparing New Edinburgh due to the city of Ottawa having installed ventilators throughout the system after the 1929 explosions. Property damage was not as severe this time, and the most significant damage occurred to the city's infrastructure. As in 1929, manhole covers at more than 40 intersections were launched into the air, some as high as 60 feet. Some of them landed on power lines, causing severe damage to the power grid. Windows were blown out in many residences, and some minor structural damage occurred as well. Days before the explosions, the city received many complaints from residents saying they'd smelled gas within their houses. However, these reports were ignored. Injuries were less severe than in 1929, and no fatalities occurred. However, many people who experienced the 1929 explosions were left in shock. One harrowing moment occurred for a 12-year-old boy who was skiing with a group of friends on Somerset Street. He was launched into the air by one of the explosions, but fortunately landed on a snowbank. The cause of the 1931 explosion again came down to seeping gasoline entering the sewer system. Initially, it was suspected that the gas was ignited by a plumber's assistant at a house on the corner of Robert and Lewis Streets. However, this was never officially determined. As for Lillian Pettipiece, she was riding a bus near her Somerset home when the explosions occurred. She received medical aid for shock, but this time was not seriously injured by the explosions. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. Or if you'd like to see more videos on the history of Ottawa, please hit the subscribe button.